The Property Podcast. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Property Podcast here, Harcourt's New Age. And if you uh, watched our previous episode, I did let uh, slip that we've got the better looking half of uh, South Auckland's <laughs> top real estate team on the show this time. It's Alex Dunn from Harcourt's Papakura. Welcome on the show. Thank you for coming on. Oh, thank you, Craig. Appreciate it. Love it. Love it. Um, I'm, ex- I'm excited to catch up with you um, because um, you uh, are a gentleman that is committed to smashing goals um, and you're Absolutely. very driven. I know yeah. we're going to get some good value um, out of our conversation. Where do I want to start is um, just tell us a little bit about your background, Alex, like before real estate. Yeah. So I was um, marketing manager prior to coming into real estate and working for a, a small business. I think it was about 10 people in the company and sort of around that time we went into that COVID lockdown. Um, business went through a huge growth trajectory there. Um, business owner was, you know, obviously making a lot of money, you know, new cars and housing, all that kind of thing. And I'm sitting in this chair in my, you know, cut off jeans and sneaks saying, look, I'm, I'm never going to have those cars if I keep sitting in this desk and doing what I'm doing now. I'm never going to have that house kind of thing. So I sort of started looking around. I was always doing a little bit of freelance marketing on the side for other companies, some within New Zealand, some outside of New Zealand, you know, trying to play with those time zones so I can come home from work at whatever it was, five, six o'clock, and then start jumping to a, you know, New York time zone. I had clients there and start working with those clients as well, make some little bit wow. of extra money on the side um, and then I just sort of I just wanted more I just wanted more chase and I just kind of I think perhaps I, I lost the passion a little bit for just being a sole marketer and just doing a lot of strategy stuff so looked elsewhere um, always had a little bit of passion in, in real estate my parents bought and sold a lot of houses over my my time we were always shifting around so there was always a li- little bit of interest there um, did a little bit of background on it, you know, always wanted to dabble in sales and I was in a marketing role, I always wanted to try and, you know, jump in with the sales guys and run out to do meetings with them with the supermarkets and stuff like that. So just real estate was just a good fit. You know, I really wanted that flexibility to do what I wanted to do and chase what I wanted to chase rather than have someone say, this is your job, this is your day, this is what you're going to do every day. I wanted to make the rules and I didn't want to have a cap on my income as well. I knew that if I worked really hard and I put the right skills in, into, into play, there's no limit for me. Mm. So that's what really led me to, to real estate, and uh, As, here and we are. <laughs> how how long now? Uh, I think this is fourth year. Okay, fourth okay. year. Um, it just cast your mind back. Um, I, I guess talk about the whole four years, but um, some of the challenges early on would be quite interesting to hear about. Yeah. Um, I guess the biggest challenge for us is that, or for, for myself, I guess I will speak personally, um, is actually having no database in Papakura area. When I joined... Uh, another company in the Papakura era. I was living in Mount Wellington at the time and I just liked what was happening in South Auckland. I liked the growth that was happening. Um, I just thought like the people a little bit more real and a bit more, I, I could relate to them a little bit more. So that's what kind of attracted me to Papakura in particular in the South Auckland. So moved in there, I had no database. So the challenge for me was building that database and for me doing that the best way we could, door knocking just knocking on doors, talking to people. You know, I wasn't that cold calling kind of guy. I think, you know, I thought it was a bit too easy. You get cold call, easy for someone to hang up on. It's hard to slam the door on someone's face and they're standing Mm. on your property. Mm. So that was a real big thing in building our database and having good communications. Then trying to figure out your script on your own. You know, are you knocking on the door and just saying, do you want to sell your house? Or are you knocking on the door to give value? And that's where you start building your database properly. Mm. Had you done door knocking prior? Never. Right. Never, never, ever, ever. But it was just something that, you know, the old saying, you've got you to love it to hate it or hate it to love it. You know, so that was just one thing that I just fully embraced it. It's like, okay, my first day in the business, I got nothing else to do. Maybe I was just door knock, you know, and I could see no one else was doing it. You know, if it was too hot, too cold, too wet, too dry, no one was doing door knocking. Those are the opportunities that I was capitalizing on to go door knocking mm. and collect their mm. data. Mm. How did you, um, you weren't part of a team when you first started, right? No, no I was a sole, sole agent. So um, I think a sole agent for, it wasn't long, it might have been a month, a couple of weeks anyway. Uh, but Amy was door knocking one side of Papakura, I was door knocking the other side of Papakura. We just sort of, you know, you're not getting success, I'm not getting success, so let's just not get success together. And just started door knocking, you know, misery loves company. Um, and then just things started to click into place and uh, we managed to knock on a door. Um, guy owned this property, it was 900 odd square metres, he owned the next door house as well. He said, look, I want to sell it, I don't want a signboard, I'll give you a listing for five days, see what you can do. We took him five offers in five days and sold it for around 2.7 million. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's all. That's all that's that's, that's yeah. awesome. 
uh, okay, so you start out and you start smashing out um, door knocking. Yeah. And I tell you, there will be agents um, watching this um, that have sold real estate for 10, 15 years yeah. and still feel uncomfortable about knocking on the neighbor's door to say, yeah. I just want to let you know yeah. I've listed your neighbor's house for sale. How do you overcome that whole voice in your head that says, oh, there's so many real estate agents, why would they choose me? Um, I'm bothering these people. Um, yeah. And all of that negative self-talk, um, particularly that you uh, encounter when you first get into yeah, real estate. Yeah. Like, give give the audience some some tips and and what happened for you in that space. Yeah, I, I I got a super strong mindset. So my mindset for that was, well, you know, to achieve your goals, this is what you got to do. You don't have to love it, but this is what we got to do. And it's just to get out there and do it. And I guess for me, it was like, well, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. We'd have every agent door knocking all the time, and it'd just be yeah. something you did. But because we've talked this into, like you say, oh, they don't, they don't want to talk to me, they don't want to be bothered. That's not the case most of the time. Most of the time, homeowners want to know what's happening around them. Mm. So why not just knock on the door? It, it's the way, the message you deliver, like I'm saying before. You know, what value are you giving them? Are you just knocking on the door to try and sell their house? Or are you knocking on the door to give them value? What's sold around them? What's just listed around them? Invite them to the open home. <laughs> what are you saying? It reminds me actually when I kind of first started to get to know you, um, you sent me a text one night saying oh, it was a screenshot of a text that you had received um, because one of, <laughs> of your brochures went into a letterbox and the guy didn't want to receive it. That's right, yeah. Um, just, just, just let's hang around that for a second. Yeah, just, absolutely. <laughs> so, so you got in contact with the guy, you yeah. called him. Yeah, yeah, he, he texted me with um, all sorts of abusive language, we won't go into it, um, saying, you know, can you not read, you're this, you're that. I just rang him back. You know, I mean, I just think if you can receive a letter like, you know, I, I just listed in your area letter, and you're so angry, like, you know, let's call the guy. Are you, are you, a, are you all good? You know? And I think he's ended up telling you it was a crappy day at work. Yeah, he had a crap day. The weather was not the best either. And, you know, he actually ended up giving me his address and his name and all that kind of thing. And I just text him once a month, just say, hey, just listen, just listen near you. Instead of putting in his letterbox, he didn't want to receive. So I text him now. <laughs> I love it because um, therein lies the kind of the thing, right? You don't know yeah, what's just what's happened. going on in people's yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's been times we've knocked on doors, they've opened the door, this lady screamed at us. Okay, all right, well, you know, all the best. You know, it's it's something that's happening for them. I believe no one can open the door and just start screaming at you. It's something that's happening in their life, and you just happen to be wrong place, wrong time. Um, talk to me about um, structure uh, and. Um, uh, Actually, let's start here. Yesterday when I rocked up to Papakura, I expected to have to turn off the alarm and turn on the lights. Yeah. No, no, you're already there yeah. um, and look like you've been there for some time. So um, when does your day start and, and how do you kind of structure it? Have you got, if we looked at your Outlook calendar, would it be like, oh my goodness, look at all those blocks. Yeah. Okay, I've never seen a well, you know, talk to yeah, us yeah. about it. Yeah, so we are super, super structured. Every day we've got our daily plan and then we've got our weekly plan. We try and stick to that to the best as possible. So my day starts 5, 5.30, get up, go to the gym, that's day one. I always like to say to myself and say to other people, if you can get up, go to the gym that early, the hardest part of your day is over. It can't get any harder than that, right? So it doesn't matter, you're door knocking, you're doing negotiations, the hardest part of your day is over. It's only easier from there, come home, nutritious breakfast every single day and then I get into the office around between 8.30 and 9, 9 o'clock as early as I can um, and then straight away we're doing our letters straight away just listed in the area just sold in the area get those out straight away again hardest part of the day get it out of the way first that way if you've got negotiations that start early afternoon into the evening you just keep on going you've got no distraction you're like oh I haven't done my letters I've got to get back to the office and do them they're already done the hardest part's over so get that out of the way yeah. first, and then you can carry on with the rest and, of the day. And I imagine uh, in that, there's, a, and I can't remember the guy's name, but there's a, um, something about some guy that was in the military that says the first thing you should do is make your bed. Was, yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah. about there, right? Eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's like, so I imagine by 12 o'clock, you're already feeling a bit of momentum. Absolutely. Because you've smashed out this, yeah. you've smashed out that, yeah. you've smashed out this. Yeah. That in turn probably creates this positivity in your mind. Yeah that you then carry through to that appraisal appointment. That's right. And so when you're That's turning right. up, you're on the balls of your feet, yeah. you're looking yeah. like Alex Dunn. You're, That's right. You're feeling yeah. really... Uh, yeah, you're feeling uh, positive sorry. and all that kind of thing. And I guess the other thing is that when I first... All, I mean, all through school and, and all through um, uni and into, into real estate, it's like, I'm not the smartest guy. I'm not doing anything spectacular, but I'm up earlier than everyone else. I work harder than everyone else, and that's how I try and get ahead. 
So it's the same philosophy I've taken through for everything. And the, look, if you looked at my Twitter X feed right now, those um, short motivational videos, yeah. they're all saying the same thing. Yeah. Just dig deep, give, yeah. the, give it the big ones, exactly. and give it stronger and harder than the next guy, yeah. um, and the reward will follow. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like you've kind of taken taken that on. Pretty much. Um, you don't just get that um, from um, yourself. So just talk to me about people in your life, whether in your network yeah. um, or uh, people like, who do you follow? Where do you get your inspiration from? Who do I get my inspiration from? Um, there's there's a lot. You know, I think um, big one for me was a uh, actually when I was, I was probably 16, 17 years old, you know, start going to the gym, want to put on some muscle. And a guy named Rich Piana, he was – Huge guy, you know, juiced out of his mind. And his whole thing was, well, if you're doing something and you're not getting the results you want, you got to do more. So that was just the whole thing I'm doing. If I'm dropping 100 letters and not getting calls back, I'm not doing enough letters. You do 1,000 letters, 2,000 letters, 3,000, 10,000 letters, then you're getting callbacks. So that was the whole thing. If I'm knocking on doors and not getting results, you're not knocking on enough doors. That's the whole, that's, I fully believe in that. Yeah. No, no, I love it. Um, I do, so I've got another question here. Yeah. Um, a defining moment in your real estate journey was there a um, a time where you kind of shook off the new vibes and um, you look back and go yeah that's when I really started to feel it yeah um, I think defining moment for me was we started getting a lot of listings on one street that we'd been prospecting really hard and I drove to work one day down this particular street and it was just signboard, signboard, signboard. I think we had eight signboards on that street at one time. And it was like, okay, like this is a proper career move now. This is what we're going to do. We're going to keep going. We're not going to lose this momentum. And that really flicked the switch for me. It's like, okay, I've worked hard to position myself as the suburb expert to the area expert to the expert in real estate. This is now starting to show for itself. We need to keep it going. I need to keep that persona going. Mm, mm, mm. Um, so with all of the success you've seen uh, and I don't know if I can let this slip uh, on the podcast I hope I can yeah. um, but you're about to become a father yes. yeah. um, congratulations it's super Thank exciting <laughs> super cool um, and and so um, that balance piece is going to become quite important for you yeah. um, just talk to me about that and about what what has Alex done doing outside of that of work outside of real estate yeah so yeah like you say baby on the way so got to pull that structure in a little bit more um i have a super super um important wife to me um love her to bits they're huge huge support system for us so i'm really grateful that she's able to just say you know i understand you're in a growth phase and probably will be for the next you know five six years um super supportive of that and she's happy for me to just go and do my thing so i think that's super important but at the same time i know that i need to be spending more time at home with her, with the baby, giving that sort of support. At the moment, we're doing crazy hours because we're so hungry for that growth. So it's finding that balance. And that's the great thing about working with Emmy as well, being able to say, okay, I'm going to have you know, half day on this day or I'm having a week off and going on holiday around Christmas or whatever it is. So one of us can pick up the ball while the other one is, is off you know, taking time out. How do you feel? Um, let's just stick with that team dynamic. Yeah. Um, do you get worried when you go away? Like, oh, is he going to be able to, like, or is that, have you just got, like, this complete, he's got my back, he knows yeah. it? Yeah, it's just blind trust. I don't need to do, I don't need to worry about anything. Do you butt heads, um, and often, like, weekly, daily, <laughs> what is that? Like, no, relation, yeah. no relationship yeah. in life is perfect, <laughs> so don't try to tell me that there's not yeah. that conflict. Yeah. Just... Is it healthy? Um, yeah. How do you push each other? Yeah. Um, and and is one person pushing the other more? Just yeah. What's yeah, the yeah. Thing I like? mean, it's a question we get all the time from people. I mean, everyone wants to know. I mean, from the outset on Instagram, it all looked you know all good, but no, we we argue all the time. It's it's a proper brother relationship that we have. We argue every single day about something, but at the end of it, it's like we both have a common goal. What we're arguing about is the best negotiation strategy. Should we, you know? pitch this way or this way it's you know should we pitch an auction negotiation um or, or, or deadline sale like this is the stuff we argue about we got to step back and say actually we're working towards the same goal it doesn't matter which way we go the goal is get the listing get the sale across the line whatever it might be but um it's it's a healthy ass we can argue 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 all the way up to literally to an appraisal mm. jump out the car 
and it doesn't even matter. It's literally a brother's relationship. Mm, mm, um, mm. But we push each other pretty hard. Um, depends on the day. I mean, the good thing is, you know, if, if Emmy's had a restless night with his kids or if I'm not feeling 100% on the day, the other one can pull each other up. You know, mm. it's very, very unlikely you've got two people that are just down in the dumps, don't really feel like working. Mm. So we can pull the other one up. Hey, what's, what's going on? Let's, you know, put your head in the game kind of thing. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, I asked Amy this question in my catch up with him, and I would like to hear your thoughts as well. Um, uh, and I would preface my comment by saying, inherently the people, um, the agents that I know um, in the business are good people yeah. um, and they are yes people and they want to say yes and they don't want to let you down and they want to do a good job. Um, so when it comes time to come and see a homeowner um, and have a discussion to say, we need to reduce the price on your property yeah. so it meets the market and sells. Yeah. I know it's not what you want to hear, but your property is only worth 649000 um, yeah. How do you front those conversations? Is it uncomfortable to you? Um, and yeah, how do you feel about giving people, um, not necessarily bad news, but, but the truth and the facts? Yeah, I think... It's probably a real estate's hardest job is having a tough conversation with really good people. So we go into it and we often say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, thank you for your time this evening. It's usually in the evening. Um, you know, we, we will say just like this, we'll say, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, thank you for your time this evening. One of our toughest parts of our job is having tough conversations with really good people. This is one of those times. And it sets the tone from the get-go. You know, their faces drop, they're all theirs to you, and you can very methodically and just tell them what they need to hear. Most people want to know what they want to hear. If someone, you know, you go like have a price conversation, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, your property's only worth 600, our currently price at 700, I think we need to have a price reduction. If they're saying to you, no, it's worth 700 all day long, and you can show them, hey, buyer A said this, buyer B said that, we've had offers at this level, we took to auction, it's at this level. If they still deny those facts, I would question their motivation to be selling their home. Mm. You know, and just and then again it's a conversation, come back to what is those motivations? Is it because they wanted to move over to Australia? Come back to that, hey Mr. Mrs. Vendor, you said you wanted to move over to Australia. What's that move worth to you guys? Breaking it all back. But like I say, most people want to want to hear the truth. Mm. It's hard to say, but once you deliver it, that stress goes away. You can actually have a productive conversation. And most of the time, you're getting really, really valuable information that helps everyone move forward, them included, you included, yeah, buyers yeah. to come forward. And, and I would I would ask the question there for anyone that's like resonating with yeah. what we're talking about yeah. here to say, um, how do you feel um, once you've got that news off from your heart and your head and your mind yeah. and your body? Because it weighs on you, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then it's placed in the in the court in, yeah. in the most unpleasant but factual, supportive kind of way. Yeah. Feels a heck of a lot better Absolutely. than sitting with the information, driving from yeah. open home to open home, <laughs> not wanting to just send that text to say, unfortunately, yeah, no one's through no today. One through. Well, I'll yeah. give you a call later. Let's discuss a plan for next week. Absolutely. Yeah, isn't yeah. that interesting? Absolutely. And I think we always try and meet people face to face. I think deliver that face to face rather than text message or yeah. over the phone like let's have a productive conversation like this is not a problem it's a solution we need to find yeah yeah um we're closing out to the final questions yeah. before we do that um i want to ask you um in terms of tools that real estate agents have if there were th three of your top like top tools yeah. like and i mean I just I couldn't imagine doing real estate without yeah. them. Yeah. What what would those three items be? Um, Lucky pen, for yeah. example. <laughs> um, I think definitely the iPad, um, and get the iPad that connects with the the SIM to the internet and all that kind of thing, rather than the Wi-Fi. Huge tool. It's basically a little laptop. It's got every document we need for every property. Huge for us. Um, obviously the the cell phone as well you got to have that you can't live without that um and then i think your your facebook social media ads ads manager as well huge tool as well huge outreach you can get i mean i can be driving between appointments i mean reaching literally thousands of people mm. big important tools for us mm, mm. 
Um, no, that's that's good stuff. Um, do, let's just talk about the market and and where do you um, see things moving t- as this year progresses? So we're going to see some improvements. Are you um, confident? Are you feeling positive? Feeling negative? We're going to stick in this kind of rut. Um, what are, what are your thoughts and feelings? And speaking from the heart, yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting question for me to answer, Craig. To be honest, I mean, I adopt the mentality that the market's the market. There's nothing I can do personally to change it, so we play the field that's in front of us. We just carry on every single day. We carry on with our letters, with our door knocks, with our calls, with our text messages, open homes, calling back buyers, doing the basic very, very simple. It doesn't matter if the market's up or down. The market's the market. I can't do anything to change it, so I just carry on. So unfortunately, Greg, I don't have any predictions. If it gets better, great. If it gets worse, is what it is. That's we just carry on. on. No, <laughs> I, and I'm glad you answered that in the way you answered that, Alex, um, because I, like that's one of the things I really respect about you. Um, and my personality, I do like to pay attention to yeah. absolutely everything. Um, probably sometimes to my detriment, I really like that you can block that stuff yeah. out um, and just p- stay in your own lane, swim so, your own race. Yeah, head down. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I really love it. Um, if anyone has been watching our catch up that has uh, that is not a real estate agent um, uh, and is thinking, or has been thinking about it, is thinking about yeah. it, what kind of advice would you give um, to that person? What advice would I give to someone thinking about starting real estate? Definitely want to get your structure in place. Understand that this is not an easy job. It's hard, you're gonna put in big hours. It's not easy to get started. Have a good savings amount behind you, probably I'd say three months worth of expenses, whatever that involves for your life. It's gonna be tough. Make sure you have your structure, stick to it. Do the basics very, very right. I don't do anything, Amy doesn't do anything too complicated. We do the basics consistently. Mm, mm. Yeah, that's a real simple but but highly truthful, factual message yeah. from from my position and, and where I'm standing. Yeah. Um, you've achieved a lot in your um, four years so far in real estate, um, breathtakingly. So number Thank one you. for um, uh, rate my agent for Papakura, right, for yeah. uh, the past year. Um, for Harcourts, you've finished top 20 Harcourts Northern Region, yeah. so you should be very proud of absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. Um, uh, yourselves. Uh, in terms of what's next, so what are the next goals? Where, where are we going to see this develop and progress? Yeah, uh, so I guess first and foremost is staying consistent. You really don't, we don't want to go in backwards, but I think the biggest goal for this financial year is we want to be top 20 nationwide for Harcourts. That's the big goal. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, we, and we won't be stopping there. <laughs> if people are buying or selling or thinking about it, um, whether it be a change in life circumstances, relocating, um, Australia, Timbuktu, wherever the case may be, um, who are they calling? What's the number? Yep, give me a call, uh, 0211 044 954. Have a look at our website, have a look at our reviews on Rate My Agent. We would love to have a conversation with you guys. If there's anyone um, thinking about getting into real estate and they don't want to talk to me, I don't know why you wouldn't want to, such an <laughs> uh, amicable, friendly kind of guy, but um, if they just wanted to hear it from the horse's mouth and ask you a couple of questions about um, your business yeah. uh, and real estate in general, are they welcome to get in contact? Absolutely, yeah. If you're thinking about getting into real estate, please do get in contact, 0211 Happy to have a quick chat with you guys, meet up with a coffee, whatever we want to do. Um, Alex, thank you. Um, no, I've really enjoyed um, our bond. Uh, it's we share some uh, similar interests, and I just yeah, I, I, I'm really excited. I'm really proud of you, and um, thank you for coming on the show and just thank having a there. chat. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate your time. Awesome. Thanks, mate. That's a property podcast uh, for another session. Um, I haven't booked my next guest, uh, but I can tell you one thing. Uh, whoever that person is, it's going to be an exciting uh, podcast. So stay tuned. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Uh, Harcourt's Property Podcast. Craig Stewart, your host, saying see you again soon.